Gary Freeman, and I have 30 years' experience in the clinical industry, both in drugs and devices, having worked in pharmaceutical companies, device companies, and CROs. I'm currently operating a niche provider company, and I provide monitoring and auditing services to the industry. This webinar is going to discuss these trials and highlight the important role that the investigator plays in this type of study, where the individual is both the investigator and the sponsor. Often the investigator fulfills his or her role as an investigator, but not that of a sponsor. This often involves the lack of adequate monitoring, which can lead to multiple regulatory deficiencies, as you probably well know. This is paramount for the safety of the subject, which is the main emphasis of the regulatory governing body in the United States, that being the FDA. We're going to present a typical process for running an IIT study, investigator-initiated trial, and discuss the role and responsibility of that investigator in these trials, highlighting the risk and providing suggestions for compliance. Most of the rules apply for investigator-initiated trials as for sponsor-initiated trials. There is no light version for sponsor responsibilities for the IIT. And as I said, these are growing in leaps and bounds um, each year, and therefore there are, is much more interest from the FDA in inspecting those studies as well. And we'll be talking about the pitfalls then. We'll look at defining what an investigator trial is, um, look at the regulations that do apply to it, um, look at the steps for initiating an investigator-initiated trial with the sponsor, and identify the documentation, the trial master file that we would need, um, and also min look at how to minimize those risks where we'd be the most. First, look at the definition of the sponsor investigator. The regulatory authorities define the sponsor investigator as an individual, an organization, or an institution that's assuming responsibility for the entire project starting right out with initiation, with the conduct of the study, the management of the trial, and or the financial support of that clinical trial. We're going to discuss drug and device as they're very similar for these kinds of studies. If we look at the Code of Federal Regulations, which is the law in the United States, for drugs, which is the 300 series, it defines the sponsor investigator in a drug or a biologic trial, again, as that individual who both initiates and conducts the investigation, and under whose immediate direction the investigational drug is administered or dispensed. The definition specifically states that the requirements applicable to a sponsor investigator under this part include that of the sponsor as well as the investigator. So it's very clear in the regulations that this person is responsible for both sides of that, doing both the sponsor and the investigator function. This includes the documentation systems, the communication with regulatory authorities such as the FDA. And often we support our investigator function, but the sponsor is the side that's not formalized. We often will give them advice about the sponsor side, such as the safety reporting, updating FDA, annual reports, and so on. But often we don't actually do that as a sponsor for that investigator. We don't want to stay too close. The sponsor does not want to be too close to the situation because otherwise it would be a sponsor-driven IND and not that of the sponsor investigator. So the very first thing that the investigator needs to have is a thorough understanding of the regulations and laws that they're accountable for, both the sponsor and the investigator side. We'll look at each one of these in a second. The 312 is your IND for drugs. What do they have to file? How do they have to perform in the clinical study that they're doing? The A12 would be the same for the ID or investigational device exemption for the device types of studies. Part 11 compliance is something that we need to teach those individuals greatly. I've worked with many of them who don't understand that password concept. They think that their administrative person can handle it all for them. And when they have to sign consent, uh, case report forms, whether it be in paper or electronic, it needs to be that person signing, not someone else. 